All right, welcome back to another video. So in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to fetch all of the bot guilds from the Discord uh, REST API. So basically all the guilds that the bot is in, I'm going to show you how we could fetch that. And then in the next episode, I'll show you how to fetch the user guilds, which we're going to do. A little, it's going to be done a little bit differently. Same same way, but it, there's just a couple things that we need to do. And after that, I'm going to show you how we can get all of the mutual guilds. The end goal is to get all of the guilds that both the bot and the user are in, as well as the guilds that the user actually has permissions for, because we want to build out a menu page similar to the Me6 dashboard, where you can see that uh, even though I'm in seven servers, it only shows uh, four servers here. And for all four of these servers, I have the minimum permissions uh, to actually be able to access the dashboard. Okay, so that's the whole goal of this whole, you know, the next couple of episodes. So the first thing that we'll do is we'll go into the developer portal real quick. And we're going to go ahead now to grab our bot token. So just go over to your application, make sure you select bot. If you haven't already, very early in the tutorial, we actually clicked on add bot. So if you haven't done that, click on the add bot button and you'll see the actual bot. And then you can go ahead and copy the token. You can also regenerate the token in case if your token gets leaked. But I'm going to copy the token. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and add the Discord bot token right over here as an environment variable. Now what I'll do is I'm going to go into my terminal. And I'm going to go ahead and install two dependencies. So I'll install Axios because we're going to be making HTTP requests. And let me also install the types package as well. And when once we're done with that, we'll just run the server again. One more thing that I'll do is I'm going to go ahead and add the bot to our server. So I'm going to go into OAuth2 right over here. I'm going to go and copy the client ID. Okay, make sure you have the selected application. So copy the client ID, and then I'm going to go over to this URL. So you're going to want to visit this uh, discord.com slash API slash OAuth2 slash authorize URL. And you're going to add a question mark at the very end, which is basically means it's a query string. And you're going to add the client underscore ID parameter, the query parameter. And then you're going to use ampersand sign, so the and symbol, scope equals bot. Okay, so this will basically authorize our application and it'll add it to our server. So I'm going to add it to the test server. You can see that right now my test server does not have anything. So I'm going to click on authorize. And let's go ahead and just solve the capture real quick. And now our application is in our server. And that's good because now we can actually, uh, now our bot is in the server. So when we make an, a when we make an API call to the Discord, uh, API, we'll be able to see all the guilds, well, which is just one guild currently. Okay, so now that we're done with that, let's go into our code base again. And we're going to go inside our routes folder. So inside our routes folder, this is basically uh, inside the uh, this route over here. We're going to reuse this, uh, this guild's endpoint, okay, because we're not going to be doing anything else with this, so we might as well just use it. So inside this function, I'm actually going to do this before I continue. Let me create a new folder called controllers. And I should have done this a while ago, but it's okay because most of our routes that we had set up didn't really have much uh, logic. So it was okay, but I'll actually just, uh, I'll, I'll slowly fix those up later, but let me go ahead into controllers and I'm going to create a new folder called guilds and we're going to create an index.ts file. Okay. So inside the controllers guilds index.ts file, this is where we're going to create all of our uh, function handlers for the request. So I'm basically taking this function over here and I'm going to go ahead and export it. Uh, let's do it, export async function. And this is going to be a named function and we'll call this uh, get guilds controller. So we're kind of similarly following the Next.js structure in our own way. Um, and it's good to have structure, of course, because even though we are using an unopinionated, unopinionated framework, it's very important to have structure. Okay. Just wanted to paste that into just to see what I had there. And let me just go ahead into the guilds router and let me just paste that in there and we got to import that. Okay. So it's going to call is authenticated. Then after the, if the user is authenticated, it'll call get guilds controller. 
And the reason why we're doing this is, like I said, to make our code a lot more modular. And one important thing is that it actually makes it very easy to test your code. So if we write unit test, right, uh, and we will, um, we can actually just import this get guilds controller into our test file and we can just unit test it very easily. Okay. Um, all right, cool. So now that we have that you know, out of the way, let's go ahead and do the same thing for services because we're going to create a folder called services and we're going to create a folder called guilds and we'll create an index.ts file. Now inside here, I'm going to import Axios. Okay. And we're just, this is just where all of our service functions will live. So we'll create a function called, uh, let's see, we're going to call this get bot guilds, get bot guilds service. Okay. So this function is going to literally fetch the bot guilds. Okay. And we just uh, suffix it with service just so that we know exactly what this function is. So we don't become confused. Okay. So now what do we have to do inside this function? Well, in this function, we just need to call axios.get and we need to pass in the Discord API URL. So the latest version as of right now is version nine. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and create a new file called constants.ts inside the utils folder. And we're gonna go ahead and just declare a constant variable called uh, Discord API URL. And I'm just gonna enter the value in there. So it's just HTTPS uh, forward slash forward slash discord.com slash API and then the version which is just version 9 okay and then now we'll import that over here and we'll use a template string to interpolate the URL and then at the very end we'll add a forward slash okay and then we're going to pass in the endpoint so the endpoint to get the bot guilds is just slash I think it's slash users at me guilds okay and we're going to, need to pass in an Axios request config. So this is just going to be, uh, we're just going to pass in headers. And for headers, we just need to pass in the authorization header. Okay. And the value of this is just going to be the bot token. So we have to suffix or prefix it with bot and then space. And then we need to get the bot token. Okay. So to get the bot token, well, remember we loaded it inside uh, the environment variables. So we could just reference process.env discord bot token like that okay uh let me actually see if i could just do this uh and it should actually be loaded in memory by now so we should be able to just access it just fine okay so yeah and then we'll also just return this call and because we are returning a promise and we're not using await we can actually just remove async okay uh, and since this function is returning a promise, it'll know that it's it's asynchronous and it returns a promise. So we can just call dot then and dot catch. Okay, so now let's go ahead and call this function and see what happens. So inside our get guilds controller, and remember this function is going to be called literally right over here. Once is authenticated is done, it's going to call get guilds controller. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and do this so we know that the user is authenticated by now so we don't have to worry about checking okay because remember it's always going to call the middleware first so we'll do a simple try catch first because it's always good to handle your errors okay uh so what we'll do is we're going to go ahead and fetch all of the guilds from the discord api and so remember axios is going to return an axios response so we have to get the actual to get the actual data we'll just destructure the data object from the response and then we can just send it back okay and if there's any errors we'll log it and we'll just send a status code of 400 and then just send error okay uh cool so what we're going to do now is we're going to go into the guilds endpoint let's refresh and you can see that we have the Discord bot. Uh, well, we have the guilds that the Discord bot is in. And it's only one for now. Okay. That's pretty much it. So uh, one thing that I also do want to mention is that if you want more reference to the docs, you can easily just go 
to the developer docs section and it can view anything that you want all the endpoints everything you can see that this right over here this is the endpoint that we called slash users at me slash guild one thing that i'll do uh one thing that i'll do very quickly is i want to go ahead and just get the partial guild uh i just want to get the partial guild type so that we could type annotate it uh, so that way we don't have to, so that way we actually get IntelliSense. So it becomes very useful uh, to, you know, reference the, uh, the guild properties. Now, for some reason, I don't know why, whenever I try to click on the partial guild object, it doesn't give me the actual partial guild properties. It gives me literally everything. So since I actually had this uh, written out already in a previous in like my previous tutorials with the discord dashboard i'm just going to copy and paste it hopefully you all don't mind but it's not really much though you'll see so i'm going to create a types.ts file and i'll paste it in here and that's literally all it is okay this is the partial guild object it gives you the guild id the guild name the guild icon owner permissions and features that's all it is okay so hopefully you don't mind just you know very easily just copy and paste this and let me just do one more thing and we'll We'll end the video. We'll go back into the uh, get bot guild service function, and right after axios .get, we'll specify a pair of angle brackets, and we'll pass in that partial guild uh, type over there. But it's not just a partial guild; it's a, it's it's an array of partial guild. So we add square brackets. So now TypeScript knows what this data is. Okay, so it's going to be very useful if we need to, you know, reference the objects inside that array later. All right, cool. So we're pretty much done with this video. So what I'm going to do in the next tutorial is I'm going to show you how we can fetch the user guilds. So all the guilds that the user that is logged in is in. And then once we finish that, we'll go ahead and implement the logic for getting all of the uh, uh, getting all of the mutual guilds. So thank you very much for watching and I'll see you all in the next episode. Peace out.